Next is task number two with MPLS Multicast VPN. Next, we need to enable Multicast routing for our customer C1s on all of the PE routers. And then we have to configure PIM sparse dense modes on all the CE facing interfaces. All right, they have to create a Multicast VRF for our customer C1s on all the PE routers using a default MDT IPs of 239.00.100 and the data MDT of 239.00.100. 255.124.0 slash 24. So this is a pool of multicast IP addresses with a threshold of 500 kbps. So this is going to determine when the data MDT will be constructed. Then we need to advertise the default MDT mapping. And this is mapping to the source PE IPs via BGP. And we'll see how we're going to do that. And then we have to perform packet capture on R1 MPLS interface and review the packets to understand how the default MDT is going to be constructed. Okay, so before we start doing any configuration, let me create a span session on our switch, switch one, so we can start capturing all the packets. So monitor session one, source R1 is connected to our switch interface FAS01, and our capture PC is connected to the FAS024. Actually, this will be destination. Looks like it went in there already as a source, so I need that. Okay, there you go, destination. All right, let me have the Wireshark running on the background, and we'll come back and take a look at those. Okay, now on R1, do show IP BGP VPN V4, all summary, make sure that all of our BGP sessions are up and running. So two to the PE routers are two and R4 and one's to the local CE, which is R6. Okay, let's go ahead and enable multicast routing for the VRF C1. So if you do IP multicast routing, there's an option to specify VRF and for us it's C1. And then let me show you what we have as far as the VRF configuration at this point. It's just the regular RD and route target that has been defined. So if we go under the IP VRF C1, your MDT question mark, this is how you define your with its default. So let's do a default MDT IP address, and that is 23900.100, I believe. Let's see. Yes, dot 100. Enter, and then you have the option to do data MDT. First, define a multicast address IP pool, which is 239.255.124.0, and I believe it's slash 24. Okay, so you use the reverse match just like the access list. Here you can define the threshold, but if you're trying to do that, and our threshold is 500, you see the command will be deprecated soon. So the newer way of defining the threshold is actually using the MDT data. And then you can see that there's a, two additional options for list and threshold. And this is where you can define the threshold. Okay. Now that we have enabled the multicast under the VRF, we can enable PIM on the CE facing interface. And for R1, that would be a FAST01.16. We want to use a sparse mode. So sparse mode and the last thing we need to configure is the default mdt mapping advertisement and to accomplish that you need to get under the router bgp and since the ad, uh, mdt address family is part of the ipv4 unicast advertisement if you have ipv4 uh, for bgp disable just like we do make sure that you Enable those. So we're going to go ahead and do BGP default IPv4 unicast to enable IPv4. And then on the newer version of iOS, there's a sp special address family as part of IPv4 for MDT. So you get under the address family IPv4 MDT, and then you can just basically activate your PE as a neighbor. Again, very similar how you would activate a neighbor for your VPN v4. And then if you have to interoperate with the older version of iOS that does not yet support MDT as the address family, then what you have to do also, in this case, we have our router R4 running older version of iOS. 
So you're going to have to also send an extended community. So with the command send community extended, and I'll explain later why you would need that once we take a look at the router R4. But for now, we need the send community extended command for that. Okay, so we're going to have to do the same thing on R2. Let me kind of go through that quickly. First, IP multicast routing for VRFC1, and then IP VRFC1 MDT with the default IP of 239.0.0.100. And again, the default MDT IP is per VRF. So if you have different VRF running, then you will have a unique default MDT multicast address per VRF. Same thing with the data MDT. The IP should never overlap between the VRF. Okay, so 255. 124.0 and then slash 24 and then MDT data threshold 500. You have to enable the PIMs on the LAN interface. IP PIM sparse dense mode. And now same thing under the router BGP default IPv4 unicast address family IPv4 MDT neighbor 1601 activate 04 activate and then 04 we need a send community extended all right now the last pe router we need to configure is r4 and like i mentioned r4 is running older version of ios the majority of the command will be pretty much identical as you will see so ipv uh, vrf c1 mdt default two three nine zero zero dot one hundred and then you have MDT data the question mark you can see that the older way of defining the MDT data there's no separate options for the threshold or list so everything is defined in the same line right here if you want to define threshold and 500 and then the interface that we need to Enable PIM is fast as zero, 00. So IP PIM sparse dense. And then under the route BGP 100. First thing is to enable again the support for IPv4 if you have that disabled. And now if you're trying to do the same thing as what we did in the newer version of iOS with the address family IPv4, if you question mark, you can see that we do not have MDT option. Okay, and that's because R4 does not support that. And with the older version of iOS, the MDT mapping is actually sent as part of the VPN v4, as you will see in a second. And we actually have the route distinguisher prepended as well. And because if you do a show IP VGP, let's see if we have that already. Show IP VGP VPN v4 all. You see right here with the Route target of 100, 100, you actually have this two colon prepended, and that's the old way of the MDT mapping advertisement. And so far, R4 has received the MDT mapping from both R1 and R2. So I think if you do show IP PIM MDT BGP, you see that there's a mapping entries, and this is mapped to the MDT groups of 239001100s, which is our VRF default MDT multicast IPs. Okay, so let me stop Wireshark real quick, but before reviewing the Wireshark capture, let's do some show commands, and we just gotta do this in R1. So when we did the configuration, there's a bunch of locking messages that kind of flew by. Um, we saw the BGP session kind of reset as well when we defined the address family MDT, and we had some PIM adjacency came up also between the PE routers. So as you can see, the neighbor of R2 that came up, and I believe you're also a neighbor of R4 right here. So, and when we configure, I don't know if you guys kind of catch it or not, let's see. Right here, as soon as we enter the MDT default to 100, we have our tunnel interface that came up, and this is the interface is going to be used to forward all the multicast traffic for that VRF. And this particular interface is known as MTI or multicast tunnel interface. Okay, so if you do show IP interface brief, you see that we have our tunnel zero that got added. Right, if you show IP VGP VPN V4, our neighbor, 
This is how you can check if your if the BGP neighbor is capable of the MDT address family or not. So let's take a look at the R1 neighbors. So the first entry I believe is R2. And when we search for capability right here, you will see the address family IPv4 MDT is being both advertised and received. And then if you can fast forward and trying to find ones for R4 right here, it says R4. You can see under the same entry, it's saying advertise and receive, but then in parentheses, it's also said all. And this is what tells you that this is the, you're actually interfacing with the older version of iOS, right? And you can do show IPBGP, IPv4, MDT, just to look up the mapping specifically for the VRFC one. Okay, and R1 has received the MDT mapping to PE IPs from both R2 and R4. And if you kind of dig into that a little deeper, let's use R2 as an example. And it came across as slash 32 as well. And this is basically the IPs that the R1 will send a source specific multicast join to to participate on the distribution tree. And for this particular entry, you can see that the source PE IPs is prepended by the router extinguisher, very similar to VPN v4. And then as part of the content, which you will look at later in the, in the packet capture, we also have a MDT group address that gets carried inside that advertisement. Okay, so at this point, all of the routers should know based on this entry right here where to join the share tree. Right now, same kind of output here with the show IP PIM MDT BGP. We're seeing two entries that are potential source for this particular MDT group. And then if you show IP M routes, you see that we are seeing R1, R2, and R4 claiming to be the source of the multicast traffic because all of them is acting as a speaker because they're sort of sending traffic and they're all participating on the same multicast distribution tree. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna do is show IP PIM VRF C1 neighbor. Okay, and you can see that once you have the default MDT constructed, all of the PE routers will pretty much see each other as the PIM neighbor, as I want to see R2 and R4 right now. So you can almost treat the default MDT as some kind of a layer two switch, as you will, that these of these PE routers are connected to, and they all can pretty much see each other as the PIM neighbor. Okay, but instead of being a regular switch traffic, it actually gets tunneled using the GRE encapsulation which you will see in a second. Okay, now let's jump over to our Wireshark packet capture. Let's first uh, try to identify the default MDT mapping that got advertised as part of the BGP advertisement. So we kind of have a filter built already. So if you filter based on the TCP port 179, which is the port for a BGP, and click apply, you can see a bunch of keep alive that's usually ongoing and then all of a sudden we see this session establishment that got reset when we enter that address family mdt command okay and this was at the time on r1 instead of taking you through all those negotiation we're going to do i'm just going to look for a particular string inside the packet so i want to look for the our mdt a default mdt multicast address as part of the packet detail when I click find, it's located me a packet, and this is packet 935, which is right here. It's as part of the BGP update packet that's being sent from R1 to R2. And if you look inside this update message, there's an entry for our mapping right here. So this is for R1 sending the mapping to R2, saying that the source address for this particular tree is 1621601, and this is for the group address of 239.00100. Okay, you can see this gets, uh, it contains within the BGP update message. And if we keep finding that, you will see this one is from R2 to R1, I believe, right here. And that's R2 advertising the mapping for itself, again, to the same MDT groups. And you should be finding the next one. That's again, this R1. Should we find another one for R4? I'm not sure if we capture that or not. Looks like we didn't see one for R4, but it, we saw the mapping that came from R1 and R2. Next, let's take a look at the multicast traffic 
So I'm going to use another display filter that's only look for the destination multicast group for PIM, which is 2240013, apply. And right here we have a join prune message coming from a in a direction of R3. So the prune came in this way. And I believe that happens when R1 announced itself or advertises mapping to R2 and R4. And this message right here is probably initiated from R2 to join distribution tree. As you can see that the group is trying to join right here as 2390100. And this is after R2 has been informed about the default MDT mapping. And this specifically goes towards R1. Okay, we can take another look. See pretty much the same thing here. So this one is being sent from R1. So R1 sent this one targeting to R2. So R1 wants to join R2 distribution tree for the same multicast groups. You can see that there's a few join messages. And we should be seeing one from R1 that's joining R4 as well. Not sure if you have it here or not. It doesn't look all right here. So this one is for R1 joining the tree that's being sourced from R4. Okay, so those packets are at the global multicast level. But if you look at this PIM, some of the PIMs is highlighted in red, you will see that these are actually the traffic that goes over the default MDT, as you can see, because the destination IP for that is L2390100. And right after that, we see the GRE header that provides an encapsulation of original multicast packet that's being sent from R1 to all the PIM neighbors. Okay, so those are just the regular PIM hello messages that we are seeing coming from R1, R2, and R4. So this all these happenings on top of the default MDT, and this is just basically the control packets. All right, so at this point, we have our default MDT built. The next thing we're going to do is to complete the client local multicast routing. At this point, that should complete our task number two.